All right, so welcome to this live stream here on how to start a bed and breakfast business from scratch. And this is uh, inspired by Tatiana's post about wanting to start her B&B in Italy. Um, and also because there's a lot of people in who have joined the group recently who are either in the planning stages or they are have just started out. So I wanted to do this live stream today on how to start a bed and breakfast business from scratch. Okay, thank you for joining me, Shari, Lynn and Josh. I can see you there. Thanks for, um, hello, Tatiana. This was, uh, this live stream is in, inspired by your post actually, Tatiana, but as I just said, it's for anybody who's new to the business, just starting out or who is in the planning stages as well. I want to give you some, uh, some concrete, steps and some pointers and some experience and wisdom from my own experience and that of my clients on how to start a bed and breakfast business from scratch. So you don't waste all your money and you don't waste all your time on something that just is going to be really difficult. Hello, Tatiana. Hello, Lynn. So if you're on the replay, if you're watching me live, then say hi in the comments and let me welcome you to the call. If you're watching me on the replay, then do a hashtag replay and tag me so that I'll see your question or comment after the live stream is over so that I can respond to you. So um, I'm just going to wait a few minutes and see if anyone else joins. Great, great, great. All right. So I will attempt to answer your questions and I want this to be a conversation. So do ask me any questions that you want to ask me. Um, I'm here to help you and I want to make sure that you get the most out of this live stream. So before we go into what is required these days for a b and b let's just go back to you know 10 15 years ago right before the internet and this is when i started my b and b business in france and for those of you better introduce myself first for those of you who don't know me because there are lots of new people in the group at the moment joining every day uh, my name is yvonne halling i'm the creator of the bed and breakfast owners group on facebook I'm also the creator of bedandbreakfastcoach.com, which is a company that coaches, consults, and mentors bed and breakfast owners and guest house owners and innkeepers around the world on making more money from their business, using the internet to market their business, attract more guests, fill rooms in the low seasons, and just generally have more fun with it while working less. Uh, typically, my clients will increase their business by at least 25% in one season and often by as much as 100%, some of them. So if, you, um, if you're new to this group, then uh, you're probably new to me and um, I run this group completely free of charge because I want to help people. It started for me back in 2013 when I was running my own bed and breakfast business and I'd taken it from nothing, zero to 100,000 with just four rooms in two seasons without any online travel agents at all. And so when I started to share what I knew on the LinkedIn groups at the time, um, uh, people were shocked at what I was doing and I started to give them help and advice and they started doing things that I, uh, I suggested and they started getting results. And from that, this bed and breakfast coach business grew. And I've been doing this now since 2013 and I've helped literally hundreds of people to set up their business correctly with the internet age. So that's a bit of background about me. So this uh, live stream is inspired by Tatiana's post mostly and other posts and comments that I get by email and privately and in the group sometimes on what should I do? You know, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about starting a b and I'm thinking about doing it here. I'm thinking about doing it there. Um, what's the best way to get started? So going back to what I was just saying about before the internet, before we had the internet, it was really easy to just make a nice property and make nice rooms and cook a delicious breakfast and then just wait for people to come by. And we didn't have any means of advertising. We used to maybe advertise in the, lo the local tourist office or in the newspapers, or um, we used to print expensive brochures and we used to leave them in various places around our local area. The internet came on and all came along and all of that changed. Unfortunately, many owners around the world still have no idea about how to use the internet or online marketing for their business. And that has left them wide open 
to the online travel agents and the services that they provide. Now, there's nothing wrong with listing your property on the online travel agents, especially in the beginning of your journey. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But it's not an ongoing strategy if you want to run a, a business that you love and that, that your guests love as well. Because here's where they will rob you. They will rob you of your point of differentiation for a start because everybody who lists with the online travel agents look pretty much the same. So if you're listing with online travel agents, you're going to look like a commodity. You're going to look the same as everybody else and you'll mostly be chosen on price. And that may or may not be a problem for you. If you're just doing it as a hobby or you're just doing it here and here and there and you know, it, it, in your life doesn't depend on it, like my life depended on my b, &B then it, it's probably a good way to go. So listing with the online travel agents is an option. It definitely is an option, especially uh, in the beginning of your business. The difficulty comes if you're relying, them on, relying on them in the long term it means that you're really building their business and not yours. You have no way of contacting guests personally by you. You're relying on that platform the whole time. Whatever changes they make, you cannot do anything about. The changes may or may not be good for you, mostly not good for you because they just want to make more money. And so they try and squeeze their people and so you know all of that is going on and you know that may or may not be a problem for you i don't know however if you want to build a real business and you want to serve guests that you enjoy relate uh, interacting with and that, that you can relate to then you're going to need a completely different plan so let me see in the comments if you can just give me a comments a comment in the box here what kind of business like, do you want to run? Is it you don't really care who comes just as long as people are coming and giving you cash? And that's fine, you know, no judgment here. And you're just doing it as a hobby and it doesn't really matter, but you just want the extra income. If that's your bag, then give me, then tell me, then give me a one in the comments. Just give me a one in the comments. If you really are serious about building a what I call a proper business, serving guests that you like interacting with and can relate to then give me a two in the comments box because i want to know where you're at what is your plan for your business is it just a bit of extra money a bit of pin money and you'll do it when you feel like it and you'll stick yourself on booking.com and airbnb and that'll be fine or is it a real business that serves people that you love that you relate to that you can interact with that you enjoy interacting with give me a two in the comments box if that's you too great thanks josh if you're not sure give me a three <laughs> if you're not sure at this stage just give me a three it's all right doesn't matter choice is yours anyway so here's what you're going to need i'm going to give you i'm going to give you some stuff that you can use right away okay just let me check the comments right two good hi grace hi so I'm going to talk first of all about the mindset that you will have to adopt. I'm going to talk really about the people who want to build a proper business, because if you just want to hang your property on, on, on booking.com or Airbnb and you want to use those platforms, it's fine. It's fine. It's your choice. But I can't really help you with that because you know, they do what they do and they, they give you um, a service and they give you some results and, you know, that's pretty much it. And I can't help you. But I can help you to build a proper business, what I call a real business that delights you and your guests. And the first thing you're going to have to consider is your mindset. Um, so what do I mean by that? I mean the way you think about yourself. Because in the old days, going back to before we had the Internet, we could just be what I call B and B owners, right? We could just be somebody who cooks a great breakfast, who likes talking to people, likes interacting with people, and who who you know doesn't mind doing a bit of cleaning, does the laundry, and all of that stuff. We could do that. We didn't make much money doing that. I know I didn't when I was doing that, but we see we saw ourselves as B and B owners. If you want to build a real business, you've got to see yourself basically as an online marketer. 
you've got to be an online marketer in this world that we live in right now, running a proper B&B business. So your, the way you think about yourself is crucial. And that, that means your mindset. The way you think about yourself is crucial in that you will have to become an online marketer. Sorry to break that to you, but it, it's the only way. You will also have to become, if you're going to do it properly, you will also have to become what I call a celebrity, a celebrity, a mini celebrity, not like a Kardashian type celebrity, but a celebrity, a kind of mini celebrity for your guests. You're going to have to be somebody for your guests. And that might be, you know, that might not be something that you really want to do, or it might be something that you think, well, yeah, actually I can do that. I'm a really outgoing person. I'm an extroverted person and I can do that. I just need some help on how to do that. If you're an introverted person and you know this about yourself, then it might be more difficult for you to get over yourself and to be, and to become that celebrity. So knowing yourself is really, really important before you embark on this journey, before you, you, you set up your dream B&B business, before you even buy the property. By the way, this is all before you choose the property, all of it. Do not choose the property first. You have to decide on your strategy, which I'll come to in a second. The first thing is you have to know that you can be that person who gets on a camera like this, right? Who gets on screen like this, who is prepared to put, to put their name out there and their face and their voice out there. You have to be prepared for that in this day and age and to become that, what I call a mini celebrity. If you are an introverted person, it's, it's going to be more difficult for you because it's not naturally your thing. You know, some people, I'm an extrovert, as you can tell. So I'm always on camera. I'm always talking about, you know, my business and, you know, how I help people. I'm an extrovert. That's just who I am. You have to know who you are first. Yeah, okay, good. Thanks, Shari. So you've got to be prepared. So let me go back to that. You've got to be prepared in this day and age, in the age which we live in, which is social media, which is blowing your own trumpet. And that might be difficult for you as well, especially if you've been in the corporate world. It might be difficult for you to show your face, you know, talk on, on camera like this whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on your website, you've got to be able to show your face so that we can see your face, hear your voice and feel your energy. That's what is demanded of people in this business now. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you will become like everybody else who isn't doing that. And that is the majority of owners. The majority of owners are still running businesses like the internet didn't exist. Yeah, they've got an online booking system and they've got a website, but they're not really online. They're kind of lurking in the background and, and hiding. And if you do that as well, you will become just the same as them. And many of those owners have become overwhelmed with the Internet and the online tools. And a lot of them are selling up and they're trying to sell the dream to you. So, again, before you even look at the property, do not you know, sort out who you are. And I put a, um, I put a, a little resource in the, um, in the group a little while ago where we were doing our personality tests. I'm obsessed with these things because, you know, I just love to know more about myself. So if you want to take the personality test and let me, who, let me know who you are, I can give you some feedback on what strategy is going to work best for you. So let me just put that in the comments now. And then you can go and do that when we've finished. But if you take this test, it's not really a test, it's an analysis, then you can go and do that and let me know. I wonder if I spelt that right. Okay, I've just put it in the chat box. Do yes, it is it looks like the right thing. All right, it's free. It's free. But the more we know about ourselves, the better we can show up in the world. The more we know what our strengths are, the better we can show up. So number one, then, is that you're going to have to become an online marketer. So before you choose any property at all, you need to understand what that means. 
And that means showing your face, speaking so we can hear your voice and letting us see what you represent. That's the first thing, first essential. The second essential that you're going to have to master, and you won't have any of these skills right now, especially if you've been in, in corporate, you won't have any of these skills. So learning the new skills is crucial for your new venture, if you're serious about it. And, and you know, this is a, a business that you're running here and you want it to make, you know, you want it to make a living for you and you want it to delight you because, you know, this is your life, your life force that you're investing in this business. So it's got to be right, right? It's got to be fun. The second thing is that you're going to have to become an expert at list building. That means building a list of people before you've even opened, before you've even opened. You're going to have to be a, an expert at list building. Now, um, list building means gathering names and email addresses so that when you open, you will have a, a tribe, if you like, a group of people who are interested in the service that you're going to offer because it really relates to what they're looking for. So building a list is one of the core principles of online marketing. And it's been like, it's been going now for about 20 years since the internet got serious 20 years ago. So list building, you're gonna to have to become an expert at list building. So you're gonna need an email service provider. That is not your Outlook or your Gmail. It is a, a third party list provider. So I suggest you start with MailChimp because it's free up to a certain number of um, contacts, I think. Start with MailChimp. You're going to have to become expert at gathering names and email addresses to build your own empire, your own tribe. Empire sounds a bit grand, but it, it's got to be yours. You know, when you're with the online travel agents, you have no way of building your own tribe. They've got your tribe and they don't want to give it to you, right? So you've got to take your tribe by building your own list. So the third thing that you're going to need is you're going to have to become an expert at content creation. Content is the currency of the online world. Content is the currency of the internet. And the more you create through your speaking, through your pictures, through your words, through your blog posts, through your articles, through your videos, or however you prefer to create content, that is going to become your biggest asset in order to build your list and build your, uh, your online networking, your, your network online. So content creation comes in many forms. You have, to, you have to really think about what do I like doing? When, how do I like to, to get my ideas out there? How do I like to share with the world? And you may not be familiar with sharing anything with the world right now especially if you're in corporate and they've actively discouraged you from doing that. But you're going to have to do that if you're going to run a successful B&B. &B. So those are the three essentials that you're going to need. You're going, to have to be, you're going to have to be great at online networking, connecting with people, finding out who the influencers are in, in, your, in your area that you want to specialize in, which I'll come to in a second. You're going to have to uh, sign up to a list builder and be, get, become an expert at building a list. And, and in order to build that list, you need, you need to be an expert at content creation, like a mad thing at content creation. So I'm just going to check the comments here. All right, Tatiana, before I move on to, to, the, to the next bit that I want to share with you today. Tatiana, what worries me is that the house, it's mine, it's located in a non-touristic place at all, very different from famous villages. How much work should I do? Maybe years. It depends, Tatiana. It depends on how quickly you master those three essentials that I've just given you. Okay? It depends on how quickly you can master those three things that I've given you. Okay? So what else do you need to start a B&B &B from scratch? All right, let me move into the nuts and bolts of it now. Before, again, before you even think about the property, before you even think about buying the property, I know, Tatiana, you've got a property already. If you're buying an existing business, then you can pretty much guarantee that it's been run down, all right, that it's not opera operating at its full potential because the owners have probably been uh, feeling burned out. 
they they may be disillusioned or overwhelmed by the internet they may be disillusioned by the booking the online travel agencies the booking.coms they may have been uh, they may be suffering from competition from airbnb you know all of these are really common problems in the industry today so whatever they're telling you whatever dream they're trying to sell to you in, you know be very careful about about what you're actually buying here right okay great if you are starting from scratch so so if you're buying sorry just before i move on if you're buying an existing bnb you will be starting from scratch it's like you might have some clients you know some guests who came last year or the year before and if you market it well and you become expert at the three essentials i've just given you you might get some of them to come back but bear in mind that those people had a relationship with the previous owners and so you're going to have to re you have to go to have to cultivate a relationship with those guests if indeed those guests are the ones that you want to welcome so you're pretty much starting from scratch except you've got something that's sort of working but it won't be working very well i promise you it won't if you're starting completely from scratch like tatiana and josh is saying we converted our house after a full restoration it had been a bnb for over 20 for over 20 years though Yes, yeah, so I'd be interested, Josh, in your experience so far, because I know you're in your first year after the full restoration, aren't you? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'll be interested in your experience so far. So I think that whether you buy an existing B&B, unless you're very lucky, I mean, if it's, if it's going really well, very few people sell when it's going really, really well. They usually sell when it's on the down, on the decline, right? Very few people have the foresight to sell when it's going really well. Because, it, you know, they, they, there's nothing to change, right? It's only when things start changing and going downhill that people start thinking, oh, I can't do this anymore. I'm overwhelmed and, and booking.com and Airbnb and all that competition, right? They think like that. So you will, you will be starting from scratch to some extent, even if you buy an existing B&B. But the the, the big thing before you buy any property at all is to do some self inquiry into your, into your passions, your knowledge, the things that you like to talk about. That is the biggest mistake I see people making. It's so easy to just think that I can just buy this B&B in this beautiful idyllic location and live in this gorgeous house and people will just come. If you have no idea who your product is for, then it's gonna be really difficult to do the, the three essential things that I've just given you, the online networking, the list building and the content creation. It's gonna be really difficult for you to direct your marketing to a particular group of people if you have no idea who your product is for. And by your product, I mean your rooms what you offer you must get really clear on your strategy on who you want to welcome and why and the why is connected to you as as the host what do you like to talk about what do you relate to what do you buy books on what tv programs do you watch and then correspond that to the location where people who also like to talk about those things, who also buy books on those things, who also watch TV programs on those things come. And then you look for a property in that location. Now I know Tatiana, you're slightly different because it's your, you own this house, but you can still do it from a non-touristic location. It's going to be more difficult for sure because you haven't got the added benefit of people already coming to your area. But I guess what I'm saying, what this really sums up as, you have to make your property a destination. You have to make your property the destination that the people you want to welcome because of who you are, because of your passions and your skills and what you like to talk about, will come just to hang out with you for the same reasons that you like being there and offering your service. Does that make sense? Give me a, a yes or something or, or a no in the, in the comments box. And I'll, I'll talk further on that if you don't understand what I'm saying. 
people, guests in the, you know, in the, in the Western hemisphere, shall we say, are more savvy. They are more di discerning now. They want more from their away day getaway experience than what owners were previously offering. Okay, you, they, they want more. They want a meaningful experience. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Guests are looking for something over and above the everyday. They don't just want to go to a, a nice place and have a nice breakfast and have a quick chit chat with the owners. Millennials in particular, but even you know older people like me, I'm certainly looking for ex extra experiences now that give meaning to my life, that help me to elevate my thinking, to have conversations with people that I can relate to. I don't want to waste my time having superficial experiences anymore. Just give me a yes if you can relate. I think we're, we're in a very unique time in our human development. Um, in, in the history of human consciousness, I think we're in a very unique time. And um, there's, there's a shift going on right now in the world where you know structures are breaking down and things that we used to trust and rely on are no longer trustworthy. You know, humans are evolving on the planet right now Whereas things that were acceptable, you know, 20, 25 years ago are no longer acceptable. These days they're being investigated, they're being exposed. People are looking for a more meaningful experience with their lives. And this is coming through um, the millennial generation, but I think it's also true of my generation. I'm not a millennial by any stretch of the imagination, but... Um, I certainly feel that way. When I go away, I'm looking for something over and above the norm. I'm looking for something that will enhance my life experience. And many, many guests are looking for that now. So you cannot, you can no longer offer a superficial run of the mill experience. And if you are, and you're looking like everybody else, I predict that in the next three to five years, many, many people are going to close or go out of business because what they used to offer is no longer in demand. So if you're starting a business from scratch and you're with me here on the live stream or the replay, I want you to pay close attention to this piece, okay? You have to get your strategy nailed before you even look at a property. You have to decide what am I going to offer? How am I going to position myself for my unique experience that I'm going to offer to a particular group of guests and it can be several groups it doesn't have to be one group it can be several groups and then you have to find out where they're hanging out online and connect with them and and deliver experiences that are over and above the normal run-of-the-mill stuff that's out there okay so any questions on that I hope it's clarified in your mind just what it takes these days to start a B&B from scratch. It's not like it was 20 years ago where you, as I say, where you could just buy a nice property, you could take over, you know, what they call a turnkey operation in the States. They call it that. I don't believe that's possible anymore. I think that we, we're on another level now. We're going up, we're going to another level now where more is more guests are more demanding and they're more discerning. And if we're not there to offer them the over and above extraordinary experience that they are demanding now, then I don't see, I, I don't see how we can stay in business. It's got to be more. It's got to be more. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> so any questions, any questions at all? Let me see in the comments. Josh White, do younger people still appreciate historic museum type properties? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. And that's where your online marketing and your online networking will serve you well, to learn how to do that, to learn how to speak to people online in a way that gives you market research, gives you the answers that you need. I can't answer you. I haven't asked that question of those people, you'd have to ask them yourself.
Okay, so let's just recap, all right? So we, you've got something to go away with. The three essential skills that you're going to need in today's world, in today's environment are, you're gonna to have to become brilliant at online networking, okay? You've got to be good, good at online networking. You've got to be good at list building. You've got to build a list. You have to build a list even before you've opened, even before you've even, you know, got any sheets on the bed. You've got to be, you've got to be an expert at content creation, content creation. Content is the currency of the internet. I'll come to your question in a second, Tatiana. And the, the main thing that you have to do that I encourage you, I strongly encourage you to nail is your strategy. What are we going to offer? What is my product and who is it for? That is the most valuable work that you can do before you even open the doors. If you're buying a, an existing b, &B if you're buying a, a place and turning it into a b, b if you're turning your home into a b, &B if you've already got a place and and you and you're not living there and you want to turn it into a bnb &B, or if you're just thinking about buying a bnb &B somewhere in the world get your strategy nailed first who is this product for who do i want to welcome why do i want to welcome these people what am i going to offer to these people and where are they are they coming to this area that i'm looking at already um, and if they're not how am i going to get them there how am i going to become, going to become that mini celebrity that's, that, that offers a unique experience, stands out from the crowd, puts my face out there, is not afraid to blow my own trumpet, can be that extroverted person, can deliver an exceptional experience to the particular group of people I want to welcome. How am I going to do that? Get that nailed first before you even look at properties. I know lots of people look at properties first. I, they email me all the time. I'm look at it, looking at properties in Wales. I'm looking at properties by the beach. I think we're thinking about buying a, a property in the south of France. It's the wrong question. The question is, who am I going to serve? Who am I going to welcome? What is my product? Who it's for? And where do they hang out online? And are they coming? Are they coming to that area that I'm thinking that I'm looking at buying at or that or are they coming to that area where I've already got my property? Those are the questions you need to ask yourself. And until you've got those clear in your head, you, you'll waste a lot of time and money if you don't if you don't if you go for the property first right i'm coming to your questions now because i can see lots of them here tatiana tatiana's asking would you make two different websites one for health and one for a b and b or not as this would be my target health holistic cuisine face yoga I don't know what your product is yet, Tatiana. So let's think about your product first. Are you offering B&B? &B? Are you offering retreats? Are you offering, um, what are you offering? Okay, what is your product? And then we can decide how to present it online. As I say, go back to the strategy. What, what is my product? Who's it for? And what, how am I gonna stand out from the crowd with my unique experience? And then we'll present that online. And it may be two websites, it might be three websites, I don't know. But at the moment, you need to figure out, you know, what is my product and who's it for? That is your number one starting point. And then we'll figure out how to present it online. Josh, who are the people on that list? Potential guests or people would refer book potential guests for visiting employees? Josh, you need to decide on again who who is your who who's your product for? Who is it for? Is it for is it, is it for different groups? For different experiences and really that depends on you know how big you are as well and it's difficult to mix people up as well if you've only got a small bnb &B, it's difficult to mix up different groups of people for example people couples who are coming for a, for a getaway is a different market to couples who are going on holiday with their kids right and, and if you've got a small property it's very difficult to mix those two people up i tried it and it doesn't work you've got to keep you've got to be very specific on who you're welcoming so that you are delivering your unique experience every time without you know, distractions. So um, your, your, yeah, to begin with your list is, and I'm asking because I do not know how many people outside of my town, if that list is only supposed to be potential guests. The, the list eventually is everybody, everybody, potential guests, 
current guests and past guests. That's going to be the, the, the engine of your business going forward. So I'm talking about if you're new and you're just starting out and you haven't yet opened, then you need to build that list. When you have opened, you're going to have bookings, you're going to have guests, and they need to be on your list as well. And they are separate from people who haven't yet booked. But you've got to have them all. You've got to have them all. The more people on your list, the better. Online marketing principle number one is build a list. And it's, it's never been more crucial uh, than it is today, especially in this industry. Because I can promise you, I promise you this, that hardly anyone does this. Hardly anyone builds a list in hospitality because most people are not online marketers and they have no intention of being one. And that is going to be a problem in the future. If you become an online marketer, you will learn the skills of marketing your business online. And those skills are invaluable, not just to your B&B, but to anything that you do in business afterwards, if indeed you choose to, or anything that you do anywhere online. It's all about online marketing the whole industry the whole the whole industry the whole thing is not about the bnb it's not about the bnb it's about online marketing your unique product yourself as the mini celebrity for your guests for the people who would love the unique experience that you're offering And Josh, if you don't know, you say you don't know many people outside of my town. They're online, Josh. They're online. Everyone's online. <laughs> I know you didn't set out to be an online marketer in this business, but this is what is required now. This is, these are the three essentials that are required. Yes, Josh. Yes, yes, yes. You've got it. You've got it. Yes. And that's not to say, you know, that online travel agents don't have their place, but it, it's, it's part of your overall strategy, not your only strategy. That's, the, that's where the danger is. <laughs> I know people get into this industry. I mean, when I started, I was just a hobbyist. In 2000, when I opened my B&B in France, I was just a hobbyist, you know, I was just a housewife, you know, making nice beds and cooking great breakfast and cooking dinners as well and doing all those lovely homely things that I love to do, right? And then, you know, in 2010, when the B&B was my only, became my only source of income, the bailiffs were at the door trying to repossess our home and the gas was cut off and all sorts of financial disasters. I had to snap out of myself. I had to snap out of it. It's not about that. And yet it is, but it's not. It's more about how you market yourself and position yourself online for your ideal guests. Okay, Marie, so I think you came in um, slightly later, um, after, just after we started. So if you listen to the repair, you'll, you'll get it. But I'll just tell you what it is, okay? What would be the first step to start marketing online once you have a strategy nailed? You need to be an online networker. You need three essential skills. Three essential skills, that's four. Three essential skills. To, to once you've got your strategy nailed, right? Online networking, connecting with people, connecting with influencers, connecting with people who are related to your strategy. You have to be a, an expert at list building. You have to build a list of potential guests before you open your doors, if you're at that stage, which I believe you are. And you have to be an expert at content creation because content is the currency of the online world of the internet you have to be an expert and that content can be like getting on video like this it can be doing um blogging if you like writing it can be just um writing little articles posting on facebook interacting with people commenting all of that really you've got to get good at that and i know that's not a skill that most of us have naturally but this is the world we live in this is this is what's demanded of us right now this is what's required You've got to get online and show your face so we can see your face and hear your voice and connect with you. All right. Hello, Teresa. Hello. Great. Okay. So any more questions? Um, we've been going for 40 minutes, so I'm happy to stay on if you have more questions. If you just, Teresa's just joined, I suggest you go back to the beginning and listen to everything that I said, Teresa. And if you have questions, then tag me. Um, in the, or if you're on the, watching this on the replay, then just do hashtag replay and then tag me if you have any questions. I'll be happy to come back and answer them for you. 
Um, okay, you're welcome, Marie. Josh is saying our issue is that Facebook, Google have already been claimed by the old B&B. Um, you'll have to get those transferred over to you. I don't think that's too difficult to do. Is this in someone else's name? Do you mean in someone else's name? Okay, Sue, that's great. I'm glad you're excited. Okay, great. Uh, we have a lot of trouble getting access to those things. That are all of the old B&B. Are they in someone else's name then? Is that what you're saying, Josh? Oh, okay. You're welcome, Lynn. Um, mm, you need to get access to them. I think you can do something um, on Google and I think you can, I don't know, what, what are you talking about now? I mean, the thing is, I'm sure you can get your name transferred on Google. I'm sure you can do that if you contact Google. If, have they got a Google My Business um, account? Is that what you're talking about? Unless you've got uh, like 20,000 Facebook fans on your page, which I doubt, start again. Just start again, you know, with a new, with new energy. Because when you, when, when you transfer things on, online, you kind of take the old energy from the old owners. Yes, absolutely, Tatiana, they are indeed. Yes, yes. Which is why you need to build a list. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yes, okay, good. Good. Okay, lovely people. Um, we just check the questions box again. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Sue's saying Instagram. So just, uh, just a final word on this, okay? You need to be where, once you've got your strategy nailed, you need to find out where your people are. And they may not be on Instagram. They might be. They, they will be on Facebook for sure. And Facebook owns Instagram anyway. But they hang out in groups, right? It's the groups where you need to find those people. So you've got like a pond of people who are interested, who would be interested in what you're offering. So, you know, don't get too hung up on the platforms. They all have individual uses. You need to decide on where your people are. You need to decide on who you're going to, excuse me, hiccups. You need to decide on where your people are, what your product is, and then where your people are, and then find them online. And more than likely, they'll be hanging out in Facebook groups. They might be on Instagram as well. But you know, try to be more specific. Hello, Maureen. Um, try to be more specific. I, I encourage you to be really specific because everybody's trying to be a generalist, right? Everybody's trying to, you know, get these types of guests and get those types of guests and, and all and those types of guests. Oh, and these types of guests. Oh, and these over here. Everybody's trying to be a generalist. I encourage you not to do that. I encourage you to become a specialist because specialists get paid more than generalists right so when you're when you're a generalist you're just the same as everybody else hi louise hi you're just the same as everybody else you've got to find your niche find your specific niche and market to that niche and then you'll be the king or queen of that niche and you will be an expert in their eyes you will you'll become that mini celebrity that i was talking about earlier you'll become that mini celebrity providing you get and you become skilled in online networking, content creation, and list building. Get skilled in that because those are the skills that are required today. It, it's, it's easy to cook a great breakfast, right? Anybody can learn that, it's not difficult. It, it's easy to decorate rooms and make a nice property. Anybody can do that, but not everybody can do this. Not everybody has the skills of online marketing, especially in this industry. So I encourage you to learn those skills, right? The rest will take care of itself. Your product will take care of itself if you're sincere and genuine and authentic about what you're offering because it relates to you, it comes from your heart, then the product will take care of itself. Your job is to market the business. Okay, Tatiana, this is the part I can't understand well, looking for a group 
where to find interested people you said but I can't get it okay which part don't you get Tatiana which, which bit don't you get there's loads of groups on Facebook for your for your, uh, your specialities that you posted earlier there's loads of them what's what's the problem tell me and I'll help you Can you not find the groups? Is, is that what it is? Can you not find the groups? Looks like there's a bit of a delay here. Well, look, it's, it, we've been here 40, 45 minutes now. So I'm going to um, end the live now and then I'll come into the group and I'll try and answer your question um, in the group, Tatiana. Okay, is that okay? Because it it's, looks like it's, it's too delayed here. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting your comments. Sorry, darling. Um, so I'll end the live stream now and I'll come in the group and ask you a question in, in a little while when it's when it's done its thing. All right. When it's rendered and it's live in the group. All right. Thanks very much for joining me, everybody. I hope it was helpful um, and I'll see you in the group. Bye for now.